Hello, I'm Rachel Jones for the Finance News Network. Joining me from Renogen is CEO Stefano Morani. Stefano, welcome back to the network. Hi, Rachel. Now, Stefano, for those new to your company, can you remind us what Renogen does? So we're an emerging uh, natural gas and helium producer in South Africa. We're dual listed both on the South African Stock Exchange as well as the, uh, the main boss over here. And uh, we're developing a project called the Virginia Gas Project in South Africa, which is which is now becoming a little bit more uh, a little bit more famous by virtue of the fact that it's got disparately high proportions of helium in its gas relative to the rest of the world. And just remind us, what are some of the things that helium is used for? Well, let's put it this way. If you had to remove helium from the world today, you wouldn't have cell phones, you wouldn't have TVs, you wouldn't have fiber optic cables, you wouldn't be able to launch satellites, you would lose a significant portion of the technology that we have today, which needs helium for basically creating a sterile environment but also be using it as um, as cryogenics because it's the only thing that you can use to get superconductors down to the temperature at which they become superconductors and there's no substitute. And Stefano, could you comment on the global market for helium? In recent times the market has become particularly constrained. Uh, there was a massive strategic reserve called the BLM or the Bureau of Land Management in the United States in 2018, they announced that those reserves were at critical levels and that they weren't going to sell to the public anymore. And as a result, the disparity between supply and demand has, has increased quite substantially. And as a result, the price has gone through the roof. Um, and now the world is, is desperately looking for additional new sources. And helium is a particularly difficult commodity to find. It's very rare. The last well we drilled has just clocked in a 12% helium concentration whereas the rest of the world sits at below 0.5%. And that places us particularly well right now in this time of global helium crisis. So tell me more about this 12% fine. That sounds very exciting. Yes, it was, uh, it was actually by accident, which is why I'm quite casually dressed because I was on holiday at the time that it happened. But we started drilling a horizontal well into a sandstone trap. Uh, we discovered some time ago that there was the sandstone deposit. Um, which we were unaware of before acquiring the asset. And the sandstone deposit itself is quite large. It's about 90 square kilometers and up to 100 meters thick in some places. And what we discovered was that 50 meters into the sandstone, the thing started blowing and the pressure was, was very high compared to what we were normally used to. And the flow rates were particularly high. So is this consistent with the pre-drill prognosis? In 2016, we drilled and we discovered a well which was producing helium at around 11% and under more pressure, obviously, than, than the previous wells. But what we didn't know was how much gas was going to come out of it. And the, fifth, the first 50 meters of drilling this well has produced an inordinate amount of gas, but what we weren't expecting was a find of 12% under pressure. By global standards, it's still really high. Like I said, I mean, Qatar is producing at less than 0.1%. The United States, which is the highest concentration on average, theirs is at 0.35%. And that really is a significant game changer for the company. Obviously, a lot still needs to be determined from drilling the full thing out and running more tests and an ad. But where we stand at the moment, we're particularly excited about this. And what does this mean for phase two of the Virginia gas project and for the global helium market? In a conservative estimate, we'd be looking at about 1.2 to 1.5 tons of helium per day, which by global standards is probably around 2 to 2.5% of global production. But with a 12% concentration in the gas, that really opens up the possibility of us producing anywhere from, call it 5 to 10% of global consumption. And that then becomes a meaningful figure of liquid helium coming from any one single place in the world. And to the last question now, Stefano, what can investors expect over the next 12 months in terms of news flow? We're probably expecting to be able to release something around March time next year. Um, and then obviously there's the milestones tracker, which means that we will be announcing as and when the milestones come out, either we're ahead of schedule, on schedule or behind schedule. Um, and then, yeah, and then from there, there'll obviously be, um, yeah, the build out of the project and additional offtake agreements. Stefano Morani, congratulations on your recent find, and thanks for the update. Thank you.